everyone, I'm Alex, Video Productions Director here at Christ United. Welcome, thank you for joining us. I have a few quick announcements to share with you all before we get services started today. This month, September 26th, from 12 to 2 p.m. in the North parking lot, we will be having our very first Christ United Fair. We will have a whole gambit of fair games, fair themed food trucks, pumpkin chalk, and more. This is a great chance to gather in your community and help to build some for others. Invite your friends, invite your neighbors, invite your dogs for some fair fall fun. Take advantage of this lovely weather and volunteer at our pumpkin patch this year. It's a great opportunity to connect with the pumpkins, people, or pumpkin people in your church community or small group. Sign up today at cmc.com slash pumpkins. Take the opportunity to commit to learning and growing with your community this fall. Sign up to join one of our many fall classes, studies, or small groups that are about to get started. For more information, visit cumc.com slash adults. If you have any questions regarding service today, reach out to one of our volunteers in the lobby, or if you're online, please email page at cumc.com. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Good morning and welcome to Christ United. I am Reverend Stephanie Reed Meyer and it is a joy to be with you. I am the pastor of modern worship. Typically, Reverend Chris Dowd is in this service preaching, but this morning he is at Bridgeport with Camp Bible. So he's there with a lot of our children learning about the Bible. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions. Stephanie, does this mean he's having his study still this afternoon? My answer is yes. I think that's right. <laughs> yes, he is. If not, they would let you know. But yes, rest assured, he will be back for this. This was all scheduled. I wasn't just wandering down the hall and they pulled me in here. Although that's what I've been telling people. So we are so excited you are here for worship this morning. I do want to remind you, we are having Christ United Fair Day next Sunday following the 11 o'clock service. We'll have food trucks, carnival games, the pumpkins will be here for the pumpkin patch. It's going to be such an exciting day. So I hope you will make plans to stay after service next week to join us for a day of fellowship. I invite you to stand as you are able as we join together this morning in our opening hymn. 
Before our opening hymn, <laughs> let's join together in our call to worship. God's glory pours forth from the heavens, and the earth below it receives great joy. The promise is sure and true. Jesus came to show us how to love and to serve our neighbor. And by serving and caring for others, we truly love and serve God. Come, let us prepare ourselves for joyful service. Lord, make us ready to serve others in your name. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you're able and join in our opening hymn, number 581, Lord, whose love through humble service. Affirmation of faith, and before we have our affirmation together, I'd like to um, have the children come down during the singing of the Gloria Patri for children's time. So let us now confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. If you're a child, you're invited for it for children's time. This will be awkward if it's just me. People are coming, I promise. I have friends, y'all can sit close. Hello, everyone. Oh, y'all are sitting very far away from me. Okay, let me adjust. Okay, good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Good? Good? Okay, I have a question I need you all to answer. Can you help me out, do you think? Yes? Okay, what does the word serve mean? Serve? If you serve someone, what are you doing? Helping them. Do you all agree with that? Yes, perfect, that's the right answer. Serving is when you help someone. When have you ever helped someone? I have some really shy, not helpful people up here today. Yes, tell me when you help someone. Okay, her cousin got stuck on the bunk bed and she helped her down. Great example, yes. Helped her sister bring stuff upstairs, yes. He held the door for a lot of people. These are great examples of helping, I love it. Why do you help people? Yes. Act of kindness, to be nice, to be a good person, to be respectful, yes. It makes you feel good. Those are all great reasons to help people. Do you think we help people because we love Jesus too? Do you think that could be a reason? Yes. Okay, so we learned about serving and helping today, yes? Yes. So now I have a goal for all of you as we end today. I want you this week to find a way to help someone else. Do you think you can do that? Yes, perfect. Will you all pray with me? I'm going to say something, and then I want you to repeat it, okay? Okay, let's pray. Dear Dear God, thank you for loving us. And teaching us us how to serve. serve. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Y'all can go back to your seats. I'm a big fan of children's time. It just always takes them a little bit to warm up. I know that feeling. (laughs) Will you all join me in prayer this morning? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I first stepped onto the campus of Christ United in the summer of 2014. 
I had just graduated seminary and I was looking for a full-time church position as I began the ordination process in the United Methodist Church. Now, typically, Methodist pastors don't go around submitting resumes and interviewing at churches. I wasn't ordained yet. I wasn't even commissioned. I had just completed six years of higher education and I felt a deep call to ministry I also had a diploma to prove it. I also was really in need of some financial stability. So I applied for a job here at Christ United. And when I drove onto this campus, I remember noticing a house being built in the North parking lot. And I remember that everyone I talked to spoke about how important serving was to this congregation. I was sold. Luckily, the staff who interviewed me reciprocated the feeling that I was called to be here in this community with all of you. This morning, we continue our sermon series, Why Church? Chris and I have preached the past few weeks on why we believe being a part of a local church is important to our faith development and how we go about being Christians in the world. We've covered prayer and discipleship so far. I've especially enjoyed this series because every week along with the sermon, we get to highlight one of our extraordinary ministries here at Christ United. So the first week when we talked about prayer, we highlighted our care ministry program. Last week, we talked about discipleship and we highlighted highlighted our adult ministry program. Today's topic is one of the foundational pieces of Christ United, serving. And we're going to talk about our Serving Others ministry, too. Serving Others is already the beating heart of our community. And together, today, we get to gather and talk about why serving is such an instrumental part of our faith and of this community. And before we get too far in talking about serving, I want to acknowledge the fact that you can serve without belonging to a local church. You can even serve without really having faith at all. You can be a good person and go out in the world and do good things. But for us, for us here sitting in these pews, our faith is often the what, the why, the how we serve out in the world. It's what moves us as a community to reach out to others. As Christians, when we serve, we're sharing the love of Christ with others. Service is innate to the whole church thing, the church universal and this local church too. Here, it's something that we prioritize time and time again, and we deliver on it often too. And still, we can always do more in the world. This morning, we are going to talk about serving in relation to a kind of complicated text. I would love right here to blame this all on Chris for picking out this text. He didn't pick out the text, though. I did. (laughs) So I can't pass the blame to anyone except for myself. So here we are. We will be in the Old Testament looking at 1 Samuel. Samuel, the person, not the book, he is considered to be one of the last judges, priests, prophets before kings enter the scene. Before the Israelites had a king, Samuel and all of those before him in a similar role, they served as the person of power. They were the ones who spoke to God. They were basically the ruler. You all may remember Samuel from some stories when he was a boy. Samuel's mother, Hannah, is the woman who went into the temple and prayed and prayed for a child. She prayed for a child so hard that she promised God if she was blessed with a child, she would give that child back to God. 
she was blessed with a child. And so Samuel grew up in the temple under the mentorship of Eli, the priest at the time. There's a really famous story where Samuel is asleep at night, maybe you've heard it, and a voice calls out to him, and he thinks it's Eli time and time again, but really, it's the voice of God. This is 11 a.m., we're awake here, yeah? It's really the voice of God. Samuel is also known for anointing the Israelites' first king, King Saul. Side note, Samuel also anoints the next king while the other king is still in power. He also anoints King David. Yes, the King David of David and Goliath. I always tell people that I love reading the book of 1st and 2nd Samuel and 1st and 2nd Kings because they read like a novel. They're full of twists and turns and drama. I highly recommend them. But back to our subject today, Samuel. He was the last of his kind because the Israelites desperately wanted a king. Samuel didn't like this idea. Samuel did not think that the Israelites needed a king. Samuel thought that kings could not be trusted, that they would abuse their power, and Samuel believed that God should be the people's king, not someone who was human. But God led Samuel to anoint Saul as the first king of Israel. And our reading today is actually one of Samuel's last messages to the people. He pops up time and time again, but this is his final farewell address to the Israelites. We're going to pick up today in 1 Samuel chapter 12, We're going to read verses 16 through 25. You can find it in your pew Bible on page 243. Samuel is talking to the Israelites and says, Now therefore, take your stand and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not the wheat harvest today? I will call upon the Lord that he may send thunder and rain, and you shall know and see that wickedness that you have done in the sight of the Lord is great in demanding a king for yourself. So Samuel called upon the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. All the people said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants, so that we may not die. For we have added to all our sins the evil of demanding a king for ourselves. Pause. So the people are basically saying, Just kidding. We don't need a king if this is the destruction that's going to happen to us but it's too late. King Saul has already been anointed. It continues, Samuel said to the people, do not be afraid. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart, and do not turn aside after useless things that cannot profit or save, for they are useless. For the Lord will not cast away his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. So Samuel's reminding them that he will continue to pray for them. I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. And here's a little Deuteronomy hint right here. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. (laughs) This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Even though God has given the people a king, Samuel reminds them that their connection with God, that their emphasis on their faith can't be forgotten. It cannot be overlooked. Let's look again at verses 20 and 21. It says, serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn aside after useless things that cannot profit or save, for they are useless. Samuel's last plea of the people is that they will continue to serve God with all that they have. When we volunteer, when we reach out, when we help our neighbors, 
We are serving God. This is how we do that. I could go on and on about the mission opportunities that I've been a part of here at Christ United and the many people that I've met who have a deep, deep passion for serving. When I began here at Christ United in the youth department, one of the first group of people I met were five experienced men. They called themselves, let me repeat, they called themselves the old goats. There are now nine of these old goats. This group of men spent huge portions of the year scouting out locations for our high school mission trip, APA. They drew up plans and supplies for every single construction project we undertook. That's about 18 to 25 different sites every summer. This group of people pushed me outside of my comfort zone, encouraging me to go knock on random doors to get to know the community that the youth would be serving in. They walked beside me as I learned how to be a youth pastor. And one of my favorite things about this group was that their serving hearts didn't stop at the construction aspect. Yes, their talents and their expertises were definitely in drawing up plans and ordering lumber in bulk and teaching worksite safety. But that same group of people were the ones who showed up on Sunday morning to teach our youth about Jesus. They played nine square with kids on Sunday nights. They met with students for lunch bunch on Monday afternoons. When you serve, you begin to realize that you don't have to possess every skill. Of course, you can serve in ways that you're really good at, but you can also learn and grow and pick up new experiences and relationships along the way. I've seen the joy of an adult Sunday school class helping elementary children pick out holiday gifts for their loved ones at the Dooley Christmas Market. Due to hard work and passion, I've watched an empty parking lot become a home and a second chance for a family. I've listened in as children tie knots in blankets and say prayers for the new blanket's owner. I've heard the laughter of toddlers as they pick out books from our team of volunteers at the library. I've seen youth step outside of themselves to serve someone else. I've heard stories of sight being restored to those without means for glasses. I've watched our dirt trailer pull out of the parking lot on their way to respond to one of life's storms. I've witnessed families giggling together as they pack food for a family in another country, like what's happening out in our atrium today. I could go on and on about the mission opportunities I've witnessed here and the people I've met who have a deep, deep passion for serving. I could go on and on, and I would still never even skim the surface. I haven't gone through a day since I first began at Christ United where I haven't witnessed the serving hearts of this community. Why should you be a part of a local church? Why does the church matter? It all matters because not one of us are here alone on earth. We interact with one another. Our lives are intertwined. Our stories blend together. And we serve a God who calls each of us to acknowledge our common humanity and to work on building the kingdom of God here, right here and right now. One big way we can tackle that endeavor is by coming together to serve. Whatever your skills, whatever your lack of skills even, we believe that in serving, we catch glimpses of the face of Jesus. 
the Israelites, they, they demanded a king. They wanted someone to lead them into battle. They wanted what other cultures and nations had. They aren't wrong for that. Don't we too want leaders, leaders who speak up for us and make decisions on our behalf? But in the Israelites' demand for a king, they witnessed the presence of their God who is bigger than any king they could ever have. They're reminded by Samuel, their prophet, their priest, their judge, that above all else, God is with them and God calls them to serve. We serve when we set aside ourselves and make space for our neighbors. We serve when we come together as a community. We serve. It's who we are. It's who we are compelled to be through Jesus' examples here on earth. Jesus did ministry with normal people by his side, with fishermen and sisters. He entered into relationships with the poor, with the sad, with the broken, with the outcast, with the rich, with the everyday person. The challenge for each of us today is to find some way to serve, to find some way to make this world a better place through our kind actions. Sometimes it can be tempting to think to ourselves, uh, I'm not really a missions person, that's more my wife's thing, or maybe it's your dad's thing or your son's thing, or, you know, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I want us all to consider this our personal invitation to try out some type of serving opportunity. It doesn't even have to be related to the church. I'd love it if it was. Don't mishear me. For sure serve at the church. But it's not limited to these walls. If you need a starting place, though, all morning long, our Serving Others ministry has been in the atrium. They would love to tell you more about how they're working out in the world. I encourage you to stop in and say hi. You don't have to commit to anything. Just be open to listening to the stories and listening for God's voice in your life. As Christians, we shouldn't serve out of obligation or guilt or because I'm telling you to. We serve because we deeply care for one another, because we yearn to follow that radical love taught to us by Christ. We serve because we're united and intertwined and we're connected by God. Not everyone is going to be an old goat. We all have different places where we can fit in. I encourage you to really go and explore. I promise there's a place out there for you. And if you're really struggling with finding how to serve, anyone on our staff, especially the serving others, would love to find a spot for you. We'd love to hear your passion. Maybe there's some creative way we can even start a new thing. It's all about being the love of Christ out into the world. Whether you serve here, whether you serve in your home, wherever it is, however you help, that's when God is glorified. A few years ago, our Serving Others Ministries had shirts made, and on the back of the shirts it said, United We Serve. That's my prayer for us today, that our church may confidently proclaim, united we serve. Amen.
We now come to our time for prayers of the people. And before we pray, I'd like to mention that the flowers in this morning in the sanctuary are given in thanksgiving to God and in celebration of Jim and Jean Spencer's 52nd wedding anniversary. So let's give thanks to God for this joy. After each prayer is read this morning, I ask that you would respond with the words, Lord, hear our prayer, so let us now lift up our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Holy God, we're thankful that your spirit continues to renew each of us every day. May you help us to be witnesses of your love in a broken and hurting world. Help us to see you in others, and may we show compassion to those in need. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. May your spirit of peace continue to be over both our country and all around the world as conflict and division continue to be a reality for so many. May you grant wisdom to the leaders of our countries and may your protection be over those who face daily struggles or danger. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Please continue to be with those who have lost loved ones and homes from the recent natural disasters. Grant them your peace and help us to reach out to them to show your love and care in their time of need. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. May you comfort those who have recently lost their loved ones and who remember the ones that they've lost so long ago. And may your presence in their lives reassure them that they are never alone in their loss and in their grief. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Be with those who suffer in body or mind or spirit, as well as those who are lonely or afraid or frightened. Help them to remember that your love will continue to hold them close and that you will bring them to a place of your rest and peace. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray all these things in Christ Jesus' name and taught, who taught his disciples to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Once again, we welcome you to Christ United, especially those two who are worshiping with us online this morning. I invite you to please register your attendance this morning. That can be done using the QR code on your bulletin, or if you're a little more old school, you can find a form in the pew back in front of you that you can drop into the offering plate as it's passed. If it wasn't obvious already, our focus today is on serving others ministry. Let's check out this week's video. You know, you don't have to have skills to come and do this. We like anybody to come out as long as you're willing to, to work and have fun. That's really all you need to be able to do. <laughs> This is our calling to come out and, and work with our hands to help people. And if, if that's your calling, please love to have you come help. It works out well for me. Knowing that I can just drop in and help when I can is really good because there's a great team of uh, leaders involved. So it makes it easy. Here at Christ United, we know that God calls each of us to use our gifts and talents to serve others. And there are many projects led by or sponsored by our church that take place on this campus, in our community, or in our world throughout the year. And we know that this work would not be possible without the lay member leadership and the passion of its volunteers. This is a group called People Who Love People, and that's exactly what it is. It's a group of individuals from all over the Plano area, and um, we all felt a calling to help our food insecure friends here in our own community. Um, you know, a long time ago, when I was a little girl, there wasn't organizations like this that could help my mom and I. And so now that my mom and I together can come and do this and volunteer and give back, it has just totally touched my heart and changed my life. And every time I leave here on a Monday or a Thursday morning, I am inspired to find different ways to tap into our community and to, to find other people that can help us give and support this amazing group of friends. Um, you know, a lot of people are 
are very daunted about the chance to volunteer. They think it's a really big task. It can be something so small as going on Amazon and sending a box of granola bars or coming here and joining us. It's an hour of time and it is the most rewarding thing I do all week. So if you have already found your passion being involved with a mission project, we want to say thank you for being God's hands and feet. Thank you for inspiring us. Thank you for making us want to do better. Thank you for making us want to be better. Thank you for making a difference in our world. But if you are new to Christ United, new to volunteering, or just looking to find a new passion in your life, it's never too late. You just have to be open to the opportunities. You have to make the decision to say yes and join, join. us. Join us. Join us. We invite you to say yes. We invite you to say yes to something bigger than yourself. Say yes to being connected. Say yes to serving others. Say yes to joining us. For more information, go to cumc.com slash serving others. her ministry. We also will miss her presence and leadership. We are thankful for the many ministries she's started, for the many ministries she's sustained here at Christ United. And don't worry, she's not going anywhere. She's going to still be here on Sundays and her family will still be a part of the community here at Christ United. But boy, she deserves a breather after 18 years. Will you help me in thanking her for her service? And it always makes it a little easier when I can also announce who our new Director of Serving Others Ministry will be. It will be Lisa Riazzi. She is already on staff. She works in our children's department and she has such a heart and passions for serving. So we are excited for her to take the lead. It's gonna be a great transition. And I encourage all of you to find Lisa and Jana out in the atrium after this service to welcome them in their new position and welcome Jana into her new retirement life and to really celebrate the ministries they've done here at Christ United. We are going to pass the plates. And as we do that, we invite you to give. We are thankful for the ways you serve here at Christ United, for the ways that you give back to this community and the plates have already been passed people are looking at me funny they haven't right oh they have they have down here they haven't up there <laughs> regardless if uh, you missed it it's still available and <laughs> they're giving me thumbs up this is fun y'all uh, Chris is gonna love hearing this online <laughs> Uh, you can also give this morning if you're with us online by visiting cumc.com slash give. <laughs> However you gave, if you already gave, if you're going to give, whatever, we are thankful for you. We could not do the ministries here at Christ United without your gifts.
invite you to remain standing as you are able and join in our closing hymn, number 670, Go Forth for God. Amen. Please be seated. If you are new here at Christ United, we welcome you and encourage you. We have a table in the atrium that says new here. You can find someone from our adult ministry staff there to learn more about the ministries here at Christ United. If you're not new here, but you want to get plugged in, that's also where you should head. And don't forget in the atrium, all of our serving others tables are set up. We would love you just stop by, say hey, congratulate Jana on a well-earned break. Once again, we are so glad you worshiped with us here at Christ United this morning. As we leave this place and re-enter the world, may we serve in all that we do, in our relationships with one another, in our interactions with other. May it be holy and may God be blessed in those moments. Go forth strengthened and renewed. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be 